Hello, fellow Flyers. Automatic here for Automatic Games. I wanted to take a moment, 20 minutes or so, to talk to you about the, the Thalassodromius, um, often called the bird or even the burb in game chat. I wanted to talk about some of the uh, nuance to controlling this thing, what it can fight, when it can fight, whether you can be uh, audacious or patient with it. I would go with the latter. And um, just, just some of the ins and outs of this particular species. And while I'm sure there's many of you that already know this stuff because you play this thing regularly, I think this should be especially helpful to somebody that's new to it and has some of the basic questions that I had when picking this bird up. Now, one of the first things I want to cover is whether or not you can land in trees. And yes, you can. Kinda. I think I had illusions in my head that I could perch up on branches, but the branches don't really have collision. So you can fly right through them uh, unscathed. However, you can land in a vast majority of the trees in this game. And frankly, it's a wise move in so many situations. We're gonna put that to practice now. If you look below me, you can see that these trees all have a donut shape from above. That is to say, a hole in the middle. You see it there, there, and with the other one. You see it with all of them. You're gonna aim for that hole. If you're using controller, you're gonna depress the right thumbstick. If you said that's what she said, you're, you're juvenile. And, uh, and we're, we're good. We laid down. Nine out of ten times, if you just go for that hole, um, you're going to do fine. It, you may have to finesse it a little bit, especially when you're first attempting this stuff. But it gets to be pretty straightforward, and it's not, not really an advanced technique, so to speak. Um, it's true for the dead trees as well. In fact, they're very much, you know, they're the same trees except dead. So again, you're seeing that donut hole. Uh, perhaps they're a little more apparent in the green trees, but but this isn't rocket science either. You just sit down in the middle of that gap, and you're good to go. And that offers you a modicum of protection against land uh, dwellers. Um, not it's not foolproof. I mean, if you if you land in a shorter tree, a T Rex can pull you right out of there. Well, he doesn't pull you out of there. He just bites you and you die. Um, because these birds, they're weak, right? You know, they don't have a lot of health, and you can't even call them a glass cannon because they don't deliver a lot of damage. But there is a workaround for that that we'll deal with later. Now, for these evergreen style, we're going to impale ourselves. We've pitched the camera down. We, we've hit the right thumbstick. Um, also, I should point out that we're, we're using precise movement when trying to do all of this. Uh, a lot of times, I'll swoop in and then click on the precise movement when we're in the, the immediate vicinity of where we want to land. And, and you can see that the top, maybe eighth of that tree trunk had no collision. And then finally we found that spot where the collision kicks in. Now I think I want to show you, um, I guess as I did with the first two trees, we showed you a dead evergreen tree. Let's, let's land an alive one. And maybe it'll be one of the ones where the collision goes all the way up to the top. Because there is a specific species of these types of trees where, where that's the case. Uh, the very, very tippity top, yes, I said tippity top, actually has collision. But more often than not, you're going to find the ones that have a little give up top. Um, we'll fly by these trees. In fact, these trees to our left there, they, they might be the most tricky ones to land in, unless we're talking about the really small trees, which in most cases, I wouldn't even bother with a s super small tree if there's an alternative within reach. So here we go. Uh, just in case we're going to come at this from well above, just in case that collision's up at the top. Uh, we do precise movement. Get that camera facing down and depress the right thumbstick. And yeah, the top of the tree did give. And the nice thing about this is not only it protects you quite clearly from any land-dwelling predator, but also it gives you a semblance of camouflage against other flyers. And I've come to discover that fighting between birds is not uncommon. I mean, same species fighting, it's a taboo for some folks. You see it with other folks. But I think with birds especially, you're talking about the one prey that you can take on head to head, right? So, so you do see bird on bird combat. Now, for these trees, you can see there's no collision in the branches. At least not this high, right? 
We're going to look for the trunk and where the biggest branch breaks off from the trunk. We're going to land just above that. So there it is. And I think I think I should probably demonstrate that one more time because, you know, just to, just to hammer home the point that it's going to be that biggest branch that's breaking off from the trunk. And it's actually going to be a foot or two above that where the collision box ends. And so there we go. And another nice thing about these trees, though like the initial, like the green tree that we started with, it obscures your vision a little bit. It offer, offers you some camouflage as well. So that's, that's awful nice. If you want to go AFK or something, that, that's a great way to do it, is to perch up in a tree. Uh, let's talk about flying to begin with. Let's talk about stamina, right? Because quite obviously with the thalassodromy, uh, <laughs> with the bird, um, if you walk and jump and double tap, you don't take off. You need to sprint, right? So, okay, we'll do that. We'll go ahead and sprint, jump, double tap, and we're flying. And if you do that, you're going to start burning through your stamina because technically you're still sprinting. So go ahead and click that off when you're aloft. Once you're airborne, stop sprinting. Unless you really have to, right? Unless you're being pursued by another bird. So a lot of times I look for areas where I don't even have to sprint. Certainly trees would be one of those. You can just hop off of it. Because if the game detects that you have a lot of space below you, it'll let you fly even if you're just doing a walk hop, as it were. So this cliff is a good example. We're going to jump off the cliff, double tap, and we activate the wings. We're in flight, and we're also not sprinting at this point. That said, if you take off by sprinting, you can click off sprint immediately, and really it's not costing you that much stamina. However, something to keep in mind is, especially in aerial combat, when it's bird versus bird, stamina is everything. That little bit of stamina could be the difference between life and death. And so that's why I try to conserve it as best I can. Because honestly, you, you don't want to open yourself up to, uh, to attacks. Um, when, you, when you're lacking on stamina. And that's why I don't land on the ground, because if you were to land out on the ground just to regain stamina, then you're in a bad position, because not only are you wide open for a land-based predator, but you don't have the stamina to really get far away. Here's a nice place that I like to drink in Green Valley, mainly because this stretch of the creek, it, it's not really big enough that a Sarko is gonna hang out there all day. And so you've got this relative safety of like the cliffs around you and, and so a land-based creature is going to come from those cliffs and if that were the case I would jump in the water swim for a little bit activate sprint and fly out of there if it were a sarco and I heard it coming I just have to back up and that little ledge that we're on may even protect us but it, I've never tested it I've never had a sarco attack me in this stretch and, uh, otherwise alternatively we could back up give ourselves enough runway to sprint take off deactivate sprint and now we're flying so I, I try to personally make it a habit to find watering holes uh, find positions at watering holes like that where I feel you know relative safety as opposed to just putting down on a beach and drinking water I mean you're really leaving a lot to other people if you do that if there is any kind of predator in the area you're demonstrating way too much trust and I see that a lot, and I wish it weren't the case. So we'll perch up in here, and I think at this point I want to talk about scavenging. You know, these things are perfect for scavenging for meat, especially when, when other groups are in a fight like we have here. Now I'm looking for a trophy, because that's the pinnacle of what you can scavenge, right? Is a trophy. And so we're trying this dead Spino. No luck there. And as you see to the bottom right hand there, Caspa has picked up a trophy from a dead stego in the water. So he got the trophy successfully, he's flying to the home cave. You know, if he's an adult, he might try to try to hand off that trophy to somebody else. Um, after all, the trophy doesn't, you know, only gives you like 30 marks. But what it does do is gives you substantial growth. So as an adult, you might end up handing the thing off, but still, it's a hell of a prize. Now down below, there's a trophy in the water and there's a Sarko fight going on underwater. Something's dead that they killed. The problem with this is, it's a trap. 
Those sarcos killed something, they saw a bunch of birds in the air, and they set up this trap. They purposely let the trophy float up and did that. Not just to me, but a couple other birds, incidentally. Now here's another sarco, this one in a fight with a whole pack of theropods, one of which is dead behind him. I don't know if it holds a trophy or not, we're gonna check it out. And confirmed, there is a trophy there, but as you can see, I'm, I'm finagling with it and all, all this business. I, I'm, there's a little bit of a hesitation that none of that's good. Get the damn trophy and get the hell out of there. I mean, truly, that's the key. And we did do that, uh, but like I said, there was a lot of hesitation. Unnecessary hesitation. But the thing is, with that fight on the ground, there's so much confusion on the ground, nobody's really defending the trophy. They don't feel like, they don't feel like it's a great opportunity to be looking for a trophy when there's that Sarko there. And, and here we have it again, except this time with a trike. Uh, a bunch of different dinos are fighting a trike. We've got this dead one here that's got a trophy. Um, again, I can't seem to get in there and get that trophy. Probably a little too scared, but that trepidation doesn't do me any favors. Eventually, we do get it, and, and we're really capitalizing on their fight, on their confusion. We don't have to fight a damn thing. We've got a trophy now, and we're out of there because we've exploited what they've been doing on the ground. And so really, just fly around, look for fights on the ground, especially with, with more than... If it's a 1v1, it's going to be tough. Because as soon as it's over, it's over, and, and the winner is aware. Now, when it comes to actually hunting... So here's, here's a dino nicus that's, that's laid down in this grass. And of course, I come down there, he gets right back up, he runs away, and I yell at him. But the, the ingredients there are sound. We wanted him to lay down. That way we're taking that little bit of damage that we, we can do, and we're multiplying it times four. If they're seeded, I think it's multiplied by two. So that's what you're looking to do, is get people to forget that you're in their vicinity. Try not to flap your wings a whole hell of a lot. Do a lot more gliding than that. And wait for either somebody in a fight that's, that, that sneaks away and tries to lay down, or just wait for somebody that's been sprinting to lay down and then attack. Now you can't always, you can't always spot what they're doing in this case, and I know it's not really visible on screen. I see a theropod. I can't tell if he's laying down or standing up, but he's in a bush, so I assume he's laying down. We get down there, and he's upright, and he's ready to fight. And, and a bird cannot go head to head with anything except for a bird, in my humble opinion. I, I'd like to be proven wrong. I really would. But so we gave up on that one. We just flew away. Uh, here, there's two theropods that have laid down next to each other. We're going to go for the smaller of the two. We're going to commit, even though he, he eventually stands up. He's so close to dead, and finally he is dead. However, his friend gave us the dreaded bone break. And if, as a bird, you get the bone break, you ain't flying anywhere. Unless you could find a cliff to jump off of and then, and then activate flight midair. Otherwise, it ain't happening. Now here we've got a Stegosaurus. He's also got a friend protecting him, albeit a friend that doesn't have bone bite. And the friend has positioned himself on the far side of the Stegosaurus. So if he were to attack me, he would hit his friend. So he's actually got to come around to try to attack us. In the interim, we've killed the Sago. We've got the trophy. And we're going to get the hell out of there before this thing can kill us. So don't, don't necessarily worry about the fact that they have somebody protecting them. Be mindful of what side of the laying down dinosaur that protector is on and attack on the opposite side. Now here I'm actually engaging in combat, which is not common for me because I find the bird to be a, a patient man's dino. Um, you know. However, in this case, this T-Rex has put himself in such a poor position, he cannot stop my attacks. That said, my attacks are doing damn near nothing to him. He's a meatball, and I still hit him five or six times, and he doesn't drop dead. Uh, I checked the other corpse, and it doesn't have a trophy. Got an adult Megalania attacking. The adult Megalania dies, and suddenly I decide, well, I'll take that trophy. And the T-Rex, you know, he tries to bite, but I'm sure he's, he's more than satisfied with me flying away with that trophy instead of continuing to bug him, because frankly, he's got other dinos to deal with. And again, if you're an adult, Hand over the trophy. 
I, I don't think Zool needs it in this case, but this kind of illustrates it. Fly it to a friend and offer it, damn it. Now this one is kind of tough to see. A dino has moved into this shadowy area in these rocks, and he's hardly visible. In fact, I still only barely see him, but he's there. And it's a little glitchy because it doesn't show that he has a trophy, but you'll see that we do pull one from his corpse. The key there is he was lying down. He didn't realize I was watching him. And when they're lying down, you do times four damage, right? So that, that is key. Now I might get some shit for this one because this is a small dinosaur, maybe a juvenile, but he's jumping, trying to get up on these rocks. And I see him doing that and I'm thinking he's killing his stamina, so I'll fly down there and for no other reason than practice because I'm not hungry, he doesn't have a trophy, um, and he, he vanished there for a second, so he used his cloaking device. You know, for a juvenile, that's impressive to have a cloaking device installed. We got a little meat that we can eat, but really that was just practice and, and you can blame me all you want, but when you're a bird, I don't care about attacking juveniles. Hell, I don't care if you're attacking juveniles when you're a full-grown T-Rex. Speaking of T-Rexes, here comes one. He, he is not wounded. He's just taking a rest here and we're going to see what we can do to him. He's not quite an adult, but as you'll see, when you get that multiplier in play, you can render this this T-Rex is dead. He does get to his feet, but by that time he's meatball state, covered in blood. And though we don't get a trophy, we'll, uh, we'll chew on him a little bit. Now over here, I think what we're going to see is one of these theropods sneak away from the fight. Yep, there he is, top left-hand side of the screen. He's bleeding, he ran back there and hid behind a rock. Well, that doesn't help him against flyers. And uh, so we come down, single hit, and he's dead. Don't even land, and we get the trophy. That one was great. That one I'm real, real satisfied with. I think part of the trick when you're in the air hovering above these 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 fights um, is that you try to glide as po as much as possible or perch up somewhere if you can still maintain a clear view. So here we're perched up. And, and you know what that does is it helps them forget that you're there. So we're perched up. The dino just went and laid down in that bush or he's sitting in that bush. Either way, it's, we know we got a multiplier and we know he's fair game. So we head down there. It's gonna take a few bites. He's gonna try to get to his feet, but it's too late. We got the trophy and we're getting the hell out of there. Got a sprint to take off and then we deactivate the sprint. That way we've got maximum flight time. And sure, when you're sprinting, you do fly a little faster. I mean, when you're in air-to-air -air combat, there are appropriate times to fire up the afterburner. You know, just to create a little distance between you and the pursuer. But you do so at a cost of stamina. So, so you know, do so at your own discretion. But when you're not sprinting, but you're flying, you do that, you do that dive, give yourself four flaps of the wings to get your elevation back, dive again, you're going to be going pretty damn fast. Maybe maybe even the fastest I know in the game. So, so nothing to fret there. So I hope that this video has helped uh, somebody out there. Um, you, know, you know, the one takeaway from this is you're not going to learn how to pronounce Thalassodromius on this video. I might have pronounced it right, but if I did, count me lucky because I, I cannot pronounce half the dinosaurs in this game. Um, otherwise, I hope that some of this, some of this will prove useful to you and, and your flying experience. Um, I like the bird a lot. I just am very conscious of the fact that, you know, when you're stalking people, you don't want to be making noise and flapping those wings a lot. You want them to forget that you're there. Um, you don't need to land in the open, even even to pick up resources. You can hover above them, using that precise movement, and pick them up. Um, try not to subject yourself to to even a single attack because it might only take one attack to put you down anyhow i do hope you enjoy flying with this thing i'm having a blast with it as always this is automatic for automatic games if you like this kind of thing like this kind of thing and uh, of course if you subscribe to this kind of thing you can do just that